Now, it just so happened that the Federal Reserve nationalized money, basically. It could have happened to any good. So you, you might think about this for a second. Let's say, for example, that there was a, a, a very uh, large shoe industry in the late 19th century that kept finding itself in a whole series of financial crises and basically lobbied the federal government at some point to create uh, a national shoe uh, policy with a national shoe repositories and with like the shoes were too big to fail. Or I don't know what, but, <laughs> but, but you had a policy surrounding this and all private productions of shoes just kind of went away and everybody who made shoes you know, had to, had to register, they had to be approved, they had to be part of some big grand project, they had to be part of the national uh, ethos. Um, it became very important to the country what kind of shoes we wore. And a whole scientific establishment sort of grew up around national shoe policy. I mean, this would, this would happen. It would happen if the government had taken over the shoe industry in the same way that it's happened uh, to money. And after a while, everybody would forget how shoes were, could ever be managed by the market. Anybody who suggested such a thing would be, consi would be considered completely crazy. And until maybe one, you know, one guy makes a, you know, a, a private shoe and he holds it up to the world and says, well, here's how I made it and gave the instructions to everybody and gradually over five years, you know, everything kind of lost control and pretty soon you know, the national shoe industry you know, is under, under strain. That's basically what we're seeing today with money. So, um, but when the Fed was created, there was essentially there were two levels to the Fed. Uh, there was on one hand the scientific gloss, the claim that uh, only by national monetary management would we be able to get unemployment under control, inflation under control, calm down business cycles, in the problem of wildcat banking, bring stability and rationality to the sector. And, and all this was, this is the scientific rationale. On the other hand, there's an underlying reality that was really going on. Uh, with the creation of the Fed, which was basically that a, a banking industry that had been constantly under threat, under fire, because it had um, uh, was always faced with insolvency because it was overexpanding beyond a point at which could I, it could be sustained by the markets. So it was always involved in you know, government rackets and, and cooperating with governments buying their debts and inflating on top of those government debts using its assets and then, then inflation would turn into a business cycle and then there would be runs on the bank. Well, the banks were tired of this, right? So um, throughout the late 19th century, we saw ever more consolidation in the banking industry. And then finally in 1907 was the last straw. There's a big panic. Uh, a lot of depositors lost their money. The banks went to the government and basically a big deal was, was made. A, a big uh, uh, cooperative uh, uh, racket was pulled off where essentially the banking industry agreed to fund the government's projects forever in exchange for which it would be uh, get uh, uh, bailout guarantees from the government. And also crush banking competition. This is a big factor here in the creation of the Fed. The major big players in the industry uh, put together a regulatory system to squeeze out the smaller players and not have to face that kind of banking competition. So that was, the, that was the whole idea of the Federal Reserve. So you have on one hand a scientific rationale for the thing, and then on the other hand an underlying reality which is basically the usual scams that government's always running. You know, so, and that's the way it's existed ever since. So there were three big phases in the 20th century to this great monetary nationalist experiment. Now, of course, private currency just went away throughout the 20th century. I mean, even in the late 19th century, there's evidence that there was still private creation of money here and there. But this came to an end in the 20th century. 